So today we're going to be solving an economics problem using calculus. Let's read through this and see what we're looking at. Bob makes rings out of old silverware and sells them for profit. His cost to make each ring is 40 cents. He knows the demand function for his rings. It's this. How many should he produce to maximize his profit? Um, so we've got a couple of things going on here. Our final question is what is the maximum profit he can make and how many he should produce. We also know his cost to make each ring and we actually know the demand function for his ring, which is nice. Uh, no one in real life ever gets to know their demand function, but you know, Bob here has that power. So let's talk about what we already know, our demand function. Demand function. If you know much about economics, that's actually what sets your price. That's our price. That's what people are willing to pay. And it's a function of X, which is how many Bob produces. Uh, so we'll just write it down. 60 minus X divided by 20. So that's our price here. And it's controlled by how many he produces. So that's why it matters how many Bob produces. And that's what will maximize his profit. Next thing we'll look for is revenue. How much money Bob gets to take home from the cash register. And that is just set by, it's our price, price, what people pay at the register, times the number that he sells. So it's also a function of X. And for this particular situation, we've got 60 minus X divided by 20. That's our price times X. And uh, here we're talking about 60x minus x squared, still over 20. So that's great, and it's still a function of x. Uh, that'll, that'll keep coming up. To really know his profit, we have to know what it costs Bob. So that's where this uh, cost equation comes in, cost. And that's just what it takes him to produce each one of these. Cost is pretty easy, 0 0.40 to make each ring. So just each one he makes costs another 40 cents. Our profit here is just going to be our revenue, I'll call it R of X, minus our cost of X, which makes sense if you think about it. Say, what does it cost to produce this, and uh, how much can I make? And when those numbers even out here in this equation, you'll get the total amount of profit. Our equation is going to be 60X minus X squared divided by 20 minus our cost here, 0.4x. I'm just going to drop that last zero, which is fine. I'll box this because it's something we're going to focus on. I have an equation here, and I can plug in for any value of x and find out exactly how much profit Bob is going to make. But that's not really what I want. I want to know the maximum profit. So I don't want to know how much he'll make if he sells or makes one or ten or fifty of these rings, I want to know which is the best. And we can do that using derivatives. So using our um, derivatives, it's useful to kind of think about what is a derivative. Uh, so we'll start with one of these. Uh, we'll just go with cost function. It's going to be 0 0.4x. And, uh, you know, it's nice to visualize this uh, graphically. Um, if we have this, 0 0.4, it's a slightly upward facing line, and it's, it's a consistent slope here. So at each one of these values of x, as x gets higher and higher and higher, he just pays a consistent 0 0.4 dollars, 40 cents more for each one. So at 10, he's paid 4 dollars, and so on, and that'll continue forever. Um, it's a linear function. C prime of x, if we take the derivative of this, let's think about what does that mean. So our derivative is going to be the tangent to this line, this slope here. It's really just the, the slope at any given point. For a linear problem, that's not an exciting equation. It's just 0 0.4, which would look like this. It's just a flat line. It's the same, because that's the change for each of these. Each one of these, it only has to pay this 0.4 cents more. So this is the actual value, 10 is 10. This is what it would cost to make the next 
1. To make the next ring, we just have to pay c prime here, which is a linear function, so it's always the same. Our revenue function is going to be a little more interesting. Call that r of x. That was 60x minus x squared all over 20. So let's talk about what our prime of x would mean. That's the slope of this graph, and you can use that to predict what the next one will cost, or not cost, and this is what you'll make from the next um, product that you sell. And that's very useful here for economists. <laughs> that's a funny way to say it. To take the derivative of this, I'm going to want to make it look a little prettier, which I can do, divided by 20, minus, I'll just separate these terms, divided by 20, that looks a lot nicer. So when I want to take the derivative of this, this x just becomes 1, I have 60 over 20, and then our x squared here becomes 2x, also over 20. This simplifies to 3 minus x over 10. And this is our, our primed, which is what they're going to call the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue. And that's just, um, just their way of saying R primed, or the revenue you'll get for just one more unit. One more. You increase x by 1, this is what you should get, because this is the slope of our revenue function at a given x. And that gives you a good idea of where that line is going next. We have a profit function. What is marginal profit? For everything else, our marginal profit will be the amount of profit we'll make for the next unit. You can tell where this is going. Um, so if our profit profit equals our revenue minus our cost, understanding the marginal profit is going to equal r prime of x minus our c prime of x. So that's going to let us know what our, how much profit we'll make for our just next unit. And if you looked at our revenue function, we'll flash back to this real quick, you can see it's a negative square. Um, it's going to be have a general shape like this which means it will at some point have a maximum and we need to find that point. But it's a point once you go beyond it, you're getting less and less and less. So if you're on this side of the maximum, you always want to make more because even though you're making a little less, it's still, that's money. And then on this side, even though you're making less and less and less, it's not that big a deal at first. We're talking about money. You don't want to be there. You want to be right here at the maximum. And that's also our question. That's what Bob has asked us to figure out for him. So, for our marginal profit, we can set this uh, r of x minus c prime of x, which we've already defined as 3 minus x over 10 minus 0.4 um, let's write that in fractions, minus two-fifths here. Yeah, so this is going to be our marginal profit, this little guy right here. So if you thought about it on that line, when the slope of this line is at zero, we're going to be at the maximum profit we can make. Well, we know how to find the slope of a line. That's going to be our uh, our marginal profit, which is the equation we have here. So we need to set this equal to zero to find this maximum. 
Um, so when ma marginal profit equals zero, um, that's the same as when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue, function of x equals marginal cost, which we'll still call the function of x even though it's just a constant. Um, 3 minus x over 10 equals what I want to call 2 fifths. So we'll get this term on that side. We'll subtract x minus 10 from both sides and then also subtract 2 fifths from both sides. So we get 15 fifths, which is my 3, minus 2 fifths, and that's just going to equal 13 fifths, sure. Um, and that's going to equal my x over 10. We'll multiply both sides by 10, and we're going to get it 130 divided by 5 is going to equal my x. And that number, we'll do a little bit of math, a little calculator over here is 26. So we're thinking when marginal profit equals zero, that means the slope of our profit graph is going to equal zero, and that's when you're here at the top. That's when you've reached your maximum. Uh, real quickly, we'll just uh, look back and prove that. Um, so we'll look back at our profit functions, profit um, of x. And we'll do when x equals 26 um, profit, profit equals what? And we'll figure that out. But then also, to prove that this is indeed the best one, we'll just go below it real quick. 25 and x equals 27. And we'll see what these numbers are. And they're guaranteed if everything else is correct, to be lower than our profit value for x equals 26, when we're producing 26 units. Let's go ahead and do some, did some math beforehand here on the calculator. 75, so this is his profit. Everything is in dollars. Um, so for all his work, he's going to make 33 bucks. Um, and then this is 33.8. We can add a zero, that's fine. And then for 27, it's 33.75. So after all this, we can tell that 33 and 80 cents is higher than both of these numbers. Uh, so we win. That was correct. Uh, that that uh, ties it all up. Thank you so much for watching.